Hello everybody and welcome to Navigation 101 presented by Tile Search and Rescue. In this video we're going to cover magnetic declination, everybody's scariest topic when it comes to ground navigation. But in this video we'll demystify it for you and make it incredibly simple to navigate uh, adjusting with declination. Okay, so first off, what is declination? The Earth, unfortunately, the rotational poles, which we all know, the North and South Pole, do not line up with the Earth's magnetic poles, okay? The Earth's magnetic field is always changing and rotating, and the magnetic pole, unfortunately, does not line up with our rotational poles. You can see there's a difference here. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem because my map, my trusty map, is referenced to true north. Whereas my compass, my other navigational tool, is referenced to magnetic north, okay? And this difference here is called the declination. Okay, so declination is just the difference between the true and the magnetic poles. And this is in degrees. Okay, everybody sees that. All right, moving on. We have east and west declination. This line I drew right here is called the agonic line. This is where the magnetic field perfectly aligns with the uh, rotational poles. So there is no declination here. Here in New Mexico, we have an east declination. And out on the eastern seaboard, like in Florida, they have a west declination. This is about as far as I'm going to go into this. Basically, all you need to do is look up the declination for your town, determine whether it's east, determine whether it's west. I don't really care beyond that point. NOAA.gov has a great website to look up your magnetic declination. For example, here in Taos, New Mexico, our declination currently is 1.24 degrees east. So I have that number, me number memorized and uh, I use it for all of my calculations. The important part here is to just figure out what the declination is and whether it's east or west. Okay? Now the ultimate question is, how do we convert back and forth? Like I said earlier, all my maps are referenced to true north, whereas my compass is referenced to magnetic north. The question is, how do I go back and forth? How do I stay oriented properly with to account for declination. Okay, and that's where this comes in. Here in New Mexico, we have a good phrase, because we have east declination, that's add to bag, sub from true. With west declination, it's exactly the opposite, add to true, sub from mag. Okay, so with an east declination, following our phrase here, add to mag, sub from true, my true bearing that I want to follow is going to be my magnetic bearing plus the declination, add to mag. Uh, my magnetic bearing is going to be my true bearing minus the declination, sub from true. Complete opposite over here with west declination. My true bearing is going to be my magnetic bearing minus the declination, sub from mag. My magnetic bearing is going to be my true bearing plus declination, add to true. Okay, so basically what you need to do is go on the internet, figure out if you have east or west declination. You can just memorize these phrases, um, and that's really all you need to know. The most important thing with declination is everybody gets very confused. Like, I just can't understand it conceptually. You don't need to understand it conceptually. The most important thing that you can do when it comes when you need to adjust for declination is to just do the math, okay? Do the math, and we're gonna go over that here in just a moment. Don't try to conceptualize what is happening with declination, just kind of a basic understanding of it, but when it comes down to it, you're gonna use bearings and math that we just discussed here to actually calculate your bearings. So let's do a couple examples. Let's say I have an east declination of 10 degrees east. So somewhere near New Mexico. And I am out 
on a hike and I see a mountain off in the distance and I say, oh, that's beautiful. Let's take a bearing to that. I take a magnetic bearing of 100 degrees. Now I want to go over to my map and I want to plot that bearing of 100 degrees on my map. I can't do that because my map is referenced to true north. Okay, so I need to figure out what my true bearing is. Well, remember from our page here, if I have an east declination, my true bearing is going to be my magnetic bearing plus my declination. So my true bearing equals my magnetic bearing of 100 plus declination of 10. Okay, and that's going to equal 110 degrees. So when I go to my map, I will now plot 110 degrees on my map, not 100, okay? because we accounted for declination. Now let's say I take a bearing from my map and I need to use my compass to follow it in the field. So let's say I get a bearing of 150 degrees. And remember that's a true bearing because it's referenced from the map. What's my magnetic bearing? How do I follow that in the field using my compass? Okay. My magnetic bearing here is going to be my true bearing minus the declination, sub from true. So that's going to be 150 minus 10. That's going to equal 140 degrees. Simple, right? If you just do the math, it's very simple. So when I go out in the field, I'm going to follow a bearing of 140 degrees on my compass. Easy peasy. Okay? Now let's just do a couple examples with west declination. Let's say I have 15 degree west declination. Okay, I'm out in the field. I take a magnetic bearing, 75 degrees. Okay, from our trusty little handout here, I need to plot that on a map, so I need to figure out what the true bearing is. And if I have west declination, my true bearing is going to equal my magnetic bearing minus the declination, which is going to equal 75 minus 15, which is going to give me a value of 60 degrees. So when I go to plot this on my map, I'm going to plot 60 degrees on my map. Okay, so let's say now I took a bearing from my map of 100 degrees and I need to follow that in the field using my compass, using our handout here if I have a west declination. I need to calculate what my magnetic bearing is, right? And my magnetic bearing with west declination is going to be the true bearing plus the declination. So that's going to be, excuse me, it's going to be 100 plus 15. And that's going to equal 115 degrees. Okay, so if I took a true bearing off my map of 100 degrees, and I need to follow in the field using my compass, I'm gonna actually follow 115 degrees on my compass to be able to navigate properly in the field. So I'm gonna say this one more time. Do the math. It's very simple. You know, just figure out which declination you guys have, east or west, and um, follow these directions and do the math. It's very, very simple. Don't get confused. I see a lot of videos out there that are very confusing and don't outline it very well. So just remember a couple key points. My map is always referenced to true north. My compass is always referenced to magnetic north. Okay. Now as a quick side note, you guys, there are compasses here. Like I have this Sunto that actually account and adjust for declination. It has this little key here 
and I can adjust this screw right there on the back. It's probably hard to get it in focus. There's a little screw there and I can actually set my declination on this compass so it's always referenced to true north, no matter what. <clears throat> it makes it very easy because I no longer have to convert back and forth between magnetic and true. All I have to do is set it on my compass and forget it, set it and forget it. So now whenever I use my compass, if I take a bearing, it's always gonna be referenced to true north, no matter what. I can completely skip all this, but it's very good to know all of the math here and to know how to convert back and forth between magnetic and true uh, in case you lose this or you don't have one. Uh, I highly suggest buying one of these, but please, please, please try to understand this. Do the math, okay? That's magnetic declination demystified for you all. Once again, this is Navigation 101 presented by Taos Search and Rescue, and we'll see you all in the next video.